uh, myself Shabarinadal. I am product manager. I am taking care of controller and TIA portal and step zone option. Along with me, Mr. Prasenjit Mitra is also going to be present this session. Today, the session is on innovations on cement control 1200 and in distributed controller and advanced controller and also in software controller. So today we are going to see all the innovations what are happened in our controller from basic controller to advanced controller. So this specific slide is showing how the controllers are basic controller. We have new firmware version, which is nothing but version 4.6. And in advanced controller, we have new hardware with version 3.0. And in software controller, we have a new version, version 30.0. So what are the innovations has happened? We can see in, in depth in the next slides. So this is how our controllers are spread across the uh, portfolios and how it can be positioned across the applications. So let us see what are the innovations has been happened in with respect to 1500 uh, 1500 cpu uh, which is our advanced controller so with tia portal version 18 and primer version 3.0 uh, new hardware from 1510 sp to 1516 up to 1516 um, release and this new hardware comes with dual core so one core for program and second core for especially for communications so this is applicable up to 1516 from starting from 1510 SP to 1516. So the new hardware comes with increased program memory in all the CPU. It is 100% the memory has been increased. So how, how much it is has been increased, we will be seeing in the upcoming slides. In addition to that, uh, data memory is also increased, but not with 100%. In some CPU, you can able to see 100% decrease, but it is discrete in across the each CPUs. And as I mentioned earlier, higher communication performance because uh, yeah, dedicated code has been uh, used for communication. So because of that, we will be getting higher data throughput. So in addition to this, we are getting the higher communication performance within new hardware. Then um, new hardware will be coming with the extended temperature range, which is nothing but minus 30 to 60 degree. So which will open new door for our applications. So we can position in the application where this kind of temperature is required. And full revised display implementation, what does it mean? So new hardware will be, uh, there is no separate CPU uh, display firmware will be there. So CPU display firmware will be part of the CPU firmware itself. So going forward, uh, a simple display will be as a spare part and rest of the intelligence will be part of the so the only differentiation is going to be in terms of the memory so the performance level has been harnessed across the cpus so this will give us the um, very less effort to uh, when coming to the selection of the cpus finally uh, retentive memory also increased by 100 percentage so from 128 KB to 256 KB. So we will see what in which CPUs or memory has been increased. So <clears throat> these are the overall innovations which has happened across semantic 1500 CPU, um, new CPUs to 1516. And new hardware has been introduced and it is comes with the dual code tech, dual code. So what does the dual core means? Inside the CPU, we'll be having uh, two dedicated cores. Each core has a dedicated activity to do it. And also this new hardware will comes with a uh, new MLB. So to identify the MLB easily, there is a, a digit change in the MLB. You can see it here in the green. So 03 means um, it represents the new hardware or firmware version 3.0. You can take it in that mean also. So, the first core uh, will dedicatedly user for only the user program and diagnostics and the second core will be dedicated for communications so each care each core has its own activity to do it and what are the benefits of having the dual core so it will have more program performance and also the programming will be executed in a deterministic way and also the higher it will 
give higher communication performance because of the dedicated code for the communication so and also as i mentioned previously uh, this separate no separate firmware for uh, display because display firmware has been ported to the cpu firmware then um, the second innovations will be uh, that program memory and also you see uh, there is an increase in performance in for, for example in cpu like 1515 you can able to expect up to 400 percent increase in performance which means uh, the new cpu or new hardware can able to implement the program 400 percent faster compared to your old cpu so this is a simple uh, comparison chart uh, against the firmware version 2.9 and the version 3.0. Then um, this slide explains you detailed description of what version 2.9 increase in the performance. Whereas in the previous hardware, we used to have 16 nanoseconds for execution time of a bit operation. But with the new hardware, you'll be having a 25 nanosecond some important point need to be taken care here is so just focus on this hardware of version 3.0 15.11 and the version 2.9 of 1530 so almost it is similar 300 300 450 and in 1513 of world hardware we have 40 nanoseconds to execute but in the new hardware of 15.11 it is it takes only 25 nanoseconds so what we can observe in this is whatever the applications you have achieved in 15.13. The same can be achieved in 15.11 also. So here the price level also reduced and also the program memory, whatever you are having in the uh, older CPU is much more increased. So you can realize the same application using the 15.11 with the reduced cost. So that is the one, one important takeaway you have to take from this uh, presentation. And if you concentrate on the 15.13, and previously the standard variant comes with a 300 kb of memory and the fail safe variant comes with the 450 kb and with version 3.0 it's almost double and you can also able to observe uh, there is a significant increase in the performance so from 40 to 25 48 to 32 so this allows us to execute the program in a faster way compared to the older hardware then move on to the next slide this is same slide but it's focused on 1515 15 and 1516 15 so, so the same uh, i can able to go back and show you 1515 15 and 15 performance same can be achieved with the 1516 15 and 1515 15. so here uh, the memory is for older order is 500 it's almost 1 mb here and here the program memory is for 1516 15 is 1 and here it is 2 mb and also for 1515 15, especially it is uh, the performance level has been increased by 400 percentage so previously it is like a 30 nanosecond but it is like a, a 6 nanosecond you can achieve the uh, same operations so which executes the program very faster way this is a overview slide of um, program and data memory uh, how it has been increased so uh, this is a uh, overview comparison of firmware version 2.9 with firmware version 3.0. So we will we already focused on program memory. Um, it's 100 percent decrease, but we'll be focusing on this slide is data memory. You can see 1512's SP CPU has an 100 percent increase in the data memory, whereas the rest of the CPUs have a discrete uh, level on increase. But still, uh, you can have an increased data memory in new CPUs. The third innovations, um, the increase in the performance level. We already had a look at how the performance has been increased in each CPU. But the point I have to want to emphasize here is, uh, previously you can see the older order, the white level one, uh, or with a discrete performance. Each CPU has a discrete performance. So now here what we have done is, we have harmonized this performance level. Why we have harmonized? So in such a way, it will be very easier for customer to select which CPU we have to go. 
so here you can see uh, there is a two performance level one is small performance level and the middle so in the small every cpu will comes under 25 nanoseconds which means here we have mapped only with the with respect of bit performance so previously in 1510 sp if you if your bit execution time is 72 nanoseconds but with the new hardware it will be executed in 25 nanoseconds which gives you 188 percentage increase in the performance level so and also it's same thing uh, here all the cpu uh, including 1514 sp the new hardware also harnessed in the mid level range so here the performance level harnessation has been happened in range of 6 nanoseconds this is with respect to only the uh, bit performance but in all the word and floating operation performance also we have harmonized so uh, what is the differentiation between the cpu then so the only differentiation between the cpu is the memory so it will be very easier for uh, customer to select the uh, cpu based on the memory so yeah then then fourth innovations uh, in 1500 advanced controller is um, ambient temperature. We, uh, previously, the old hardware supported up to minus 25 degrees Celsius to plus 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, but with the new hardware, the temperature has been increased in the negative uh, minus 30 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius, which will open a new door to for a new application where application required this kind of uh, ambient temperature, operating temperature. And also one more thing uh, we, uh, I want to emphasize, this CPU controller ambient temperature, operating temperature name now matched with the I.O. level. Uh, same temperature range what we are having for our I.O. modules also. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, retentive data, uh, not only the program and data memory has been increased in the new hardware, uh, retentive data is also increased by 100 percentage for the CPU range of 1510 SP to 151. One three. So previously, uh, one twenty eight KB uh, for retentive data. Now it is has been increased to two fifty six KB, which gives more room uh, or space to store the retentive data. And also there is a significant increase in the uh, OBS uh, OB execution time uh, from CPU one five one zero SP to one five one five. Previously the OB cycle uh, will be executed every five five hundred millisecond. Now this uh, OB cycle has been reduced to two fifty microsecond, which uh, which allows us to execute the program more faster. So these are the innovations has happened in 1500 advanced controller standard and file safe cpu then we'll move on to the 15 sp 1500 sp cpus so previously in the portfolio you used to have 1510 sp and 1512 sp cpu but with the new innovations we have released a new hardware 1514 sp cpu in both standard phase safe technology and technology phase safe cpu also and this is applicable only from firmware version 3.0 and tia portal version 18 so this cpu is more about comparable with the 1515 cpu of 1500 standard cpu and it comes with the 600 kb of program memory for standard variant and 900 kb of fail safe variant and also as i said, mentioned earlier uh, this is also harmonized in the same performance level of mid level cpus so this uh, can be comparable to 1515 and 1516 performance level and one important key point we have to take away is this cpu comes with two interface uh, x1 and x2 and the two interface can have a different ip so one can be connected to our it system and one can be connected to your io system so this allows to have a two different network for two different uh, applications scenarios and also uh, the first uh, interface x1 will be comes with a uh, two port uh, for dc chip connections then it comes with the question of uh, compatibility so with the new uh, release of hardware we are, we should have a question that uh, will it be compatible to older cpu or not yes it is very much compatible with the older cpu full spare part compatible uh, from 1510 sp to 1516 so whatever the program you are using in the old hardware the same memory card can work in the new hardware also uh, and also i am getting a lot of questions on 
tier portal i am having a tier portal version 17 and whether with the tier portal version 17 can i use the version 3.0 hardware yes of course you can able to use it but the what are the innovations or functionalities with respect to version 3.0 you cannot able to get access it uh, you can you need to configure as a old cpu version 2.9 then you can download directly to the version 3.0 hardware so <clears throat> version 3.0 firmware is not only applicable to one up to 1516 it is also applicable to 1517 and 1518 but it will be upgraded with the same hardware so you will get the new functionality of version 3.0 with this existing hardware itself so whatever the hardware you are having you can able to upgrade to version 3.0 uh, this is applicable to 1517 and 1518 and there is no um, new functionalities happened in compact and 8200 proceed then um most innovative innovations i would say because without changing any hardware you can realize the memory increase or you can achieve the increased memory in the existing hardware by simply merely upgrading to the new firmware version 4.6 and this is applicable only for the version 4.0 hardware so for example this table will give you a more clear picture what is available with the version 17 and version 4.5 across the cpu of 1211 to 1217 so if you are having a um, cpu of 1211 existing 4.0 hardware and if it is having 50 kb of memory in them all the memories here mentioned it's kb and if you upgrade this CPU with the version 4.6 and version 18, the same hardware will be having an increased memory of 75 KB. So this is well appreciated innovations I would say in the market and because without any change in the hardware, you can able to increase your program space of your CPU. So which allows us to give more space for program or we can realize the more uh, much more logic with the same hardware. So this is applicable for all the hardware of 1200. So here you can see for 1 to oh, 1 7, uh, with a simple upgradation of uh, firmware, you will be getting like a um, 250 KB of memory, which is almost uh, greater than 50 percentage. So with the new CPU of 4.6, uh, this benefits you can get out of it. With this, I'll be handovering my uh, presentation to Mr. Prasenjit Mitra. Uh, for taking over the red iron system. Over to you, Prasenjit. Thank you, Zabri. Uh, good morning to all of you. I'll just share my screen. Once it is visible. Is it visible now? Yes, Prasenjit, it is. I'm audible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Zabri for the introduction regarding the standalone controllers and innovations in the standalone controllers and also in the basic controllers. So now coming to the redundant controllers, which are now, if you know that in the process or in machines also, where the downtime is like negligible, it should be 24 into 7, 365 days continuous operation is required. A redundant system is required. So by default from 15.1, we have the 1500 RN8 CPUs, which mainly catered uh, at the starting with the baggage handling or the tunnel automation and on water treatment plants. But now day by day, it is coming into market with all the different applications like boilers, uh, metal industries also, we are going into the metal industries and many, many, many more. People are also standardizing their hardware or their projects with our 1500 R system and also as for the requirement, they are also going into the X system. So coming to the new innovations in 1500 R and H. So these are some of the list of innovation we will be by default going through one by one for each of this, uh, like what are the new 1500 R CPUs like you have seen in the 15 standalone CPUs. There are now new innovations in the 1500 R CPUs also. There are R1 redundancy available with 1500 now. There is a flexible network topologies because of this R1 and other part of S2 uh, with 1500H. Uh, there is a new uh, sync module which supports up to 40 kilometers. And over another thing which we don't, we are not showing exactly the presentation here, but to 
give you a know how that now with version 18 with 1500 rmx cpu we also support the cfc functionality so the uh, oems or maybe the epcs who are using cfc or maybe people like you who are front-ending our products to the customers maybe you are also using in the older days with cfc now you can also use the same CFC blocks for our 1500 rna system apart from there there are some new innovations in the programming also so we'll be going one by one on each and every part so uh, before going into the uh, details part uh, just to show you uh, if you see here 1500 r and h actually the comparison you can see by looking into the um, architecture itself so left hand side basically just use my pointer to show you left hand side this is basically the screen r here it is 1500 h so in 1500R, there is no sync cable, but in case of H, it is having the sync cable. That is the main difference uh, because R is also a redundant system and H is actually the high available system. Uh, most of the time we have seen in case of customers also, they get confused at whether um, whenever hot redundant system is given, then H is to be specified. It is not like that. Both the systems are hot standby. Uh, the difference is because we are using here, not using the sync cable in case of 1500R. So the synchronization time here is less than 300 milliseconds and here it is less than 50 milliseconds. So if in cases where customers are not specified on the sync in time, so we can by default go with 1500R if my IOs and the project is surprising with the requirement which is catering in 1500R. So uh, and as I mentioned, because 1500H is high available, so there are some new things or all the different architectures also, also supported. So if I see step, step by step, if it, the IOs which are supported with 1500R and H is not SP, it is not MP, IOs are there, then S2 redundancies and S1 redund S1 and S2 both are supported in case of 1500R. But we have to keep in mind in case of when we are using S1 devices, uh, it is not bumpless. So when if you want a hot standby bumpless system, then S2 devices should be considered. Depending upon application to application, sometimes people also require S1, so we can have that one. Then uh, for 1500H, we can have S2, S1, and also R1. And what is the new innovations in R1, I will show you later on. In some cases, the requirement comes like the distance between the two CPUs uh, to be kept at a distance more than 100 meters because you know in case of profit net the limitation is by default 100 meters so if there is requirement we can also use media converters and go up to three kilometers in case of 1500 r system and uh, with the new innovations with version 18 1500 h we can go up to 40 kilos so 40 kilometers that it is required so if you think of the tunnel applications the most of the tunnels uh, like uh, one of the tunnels which is already installed in our India, like the Atal Tunnel, I think which is more, more than 13 kilometers. So you can think if I want our two CPUs to be kept at two ends of the tunnel, then the distance may be required more than 10 kilometers. So for that type of innovations, uh, we also have the new sync module which supports up to 50, 40 kilometers. And uh, in case of 1500R, it's by default this MRP ring is military. And uh, but in case of 1500H, this is, uh, it can be any configuration. We will see what any configuration is. So, but one thing to remember, whenever we are going for 1500R, the S1 devices should be connected by a switch. So in the ring, there should be a managed S2 switch. And after that, the S1 devices can be. Another very important point in between when we have done many sessions with our system house, means channel partners or our customers there is a concept that in previous days we used to have one r system which was basically a software redundancy that was also called r but here the concept r is not software redundancy please you are the people who are front-ending you will be going to the customer so keep in mind that r is a redundant system so it is similar like uh, the h it is like you have to download in one of the pl uh, controller and the other controller will be thinking up by default so we cannot program write program in individual CPUs like we used to do in 15 uh, R system 
which was in the older days. This has to be kept in mind. So we, if we are not clear, then we will not be able to be uh, front-ending to the customers also. So that's why I have emphasized on that particular point. So the new CPUs, uh, if you see here in 1513 and 1515, uh, there are new two variants. There's a new MLB also for that. And the memories has also increased. You will see in the next slide how the memories has increased. Only thing to just to show you here that when in 1513, we have one interface, means one subnet. In the case of 1515R, we can have two subnets with three ports. One will be the ring port and the other can be used for the communication to the higher level systems. In 1517 and 15, 1517, we have again similar like 1515R. X3 and X4 are basically dedicated for the synchronization. So the orange part is basically the optical fiber cables. And in case of 1518, is basic, we have another port apart from X1 and X2, we have another subnet, which is the X3. And X4 and X5 is basically the dedicated part. One thing to mention that X1 port is the only port where we can connect the IO controller. So the IO devices can be only connected to the uh, X1. Uh, port and uh, for, with the X2 port, we can have the TCP IP open user, modbus, any type of communication is possible except the IO controller. It is everything is possible with X1, uh, X2, or X3. So, just to have a comparison with the older CPUs uh, of R with the newer one, so you can see similar like the standalone CPUs, uh, we are having. The double the memory, program memory, so almost 300 KB was there in case of 1513 R then with version, up to version 2.9. And with the new MLB, we can go up to uh, 600 KB, which is almost double. And the same is true for 1515, where it was 500 KB, now it is 1 gigabytes. Coming to the no memory, normal data memory, and work memory, we have 1.5 megabytes. Older days, now it is 2.5, it's almost 1.5 times. And in case of uh, so, 15, it is 3 megabytes now, it is 4.5. So it is again 1.5. The processing time has also come down here. It is 50 nanoseconds instead of 80, and here it is 60 to 20 nanoseconds. Operating temperature, uh, previously it was 0 to 60. Now it is in the same variant like we have in the standalone minus 30 degree to 60 degree. We don't have any update on the 1517 or 1518. It is the similar like it was in older days. So there is no change in the operating temperature also. So the operating temperature still remains in case of 1517 and 1518 as uh, 0 to 60 degree Celsius. Sorry. Coming to the compatibility part, uh, in case of 15, not like uh, the standalone CPUs where we have a compatibility, like if I want to use it, the older CPUs as it is. So we can use it with the older MLFB. Only thing is we will not be able to get the um, features which are there in the new version 3.0 so that can be used in standalone but in case of 1500 r system uh, we can use the memory cards we can load the old programs also but it has to be kept in mind that whenever there is a r system or a h system both the firmware versions should match so if i have a older CPU of older version of with older MLFB, then I should replace it with the older MLFB itself. But if I have a new MLFB number uh, with the 3.0, I can download the older version program, but I cannot use as it is because if you see in here in the attention, it is written that the firmware version should be same for both the C. So I have to keep a spare CPU if I'm looking for my exact spare for the older system. So if it is a older system, the same MLB should be used or else both the CPUs has to be changed in this case if I want to have the new features and new system. Now, uh, with version 18, you know that we already explained about the R1 system with the 200 SP. So in some consultant specifications, they are already mentioned about Dual dependent IMs. So that is now possible with 1500H system, uh, which we called as R1. So, how it is? If I have a 1500H system 
and customer request to arrive in, we can have this new modules, which are having two interface modules. There are two power supply ports also supplied so that if customer wants to have power supply from two different sources, so if one of the power supply fails, the other power supply is still alive, and so the interface module will also be alive uh, with respect to that. Uh, there is a backplane bus on which the 1500 this IEMs are being mounted. So this is a separate unit. This base IEMs are separate unit, and we also have the BA unit which supports because it's the HFC HF IEM. So it supports all the different variants. Whether I want to connect optical, uh, it's a profinet, 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 optical, optical, optical with multi mode or single mode. All the different variants are possible. Uh, while doing the selection in here, it's selection tool you can find it in the drop down by default it comes with a profinet so if you want to select optical if the distance is more than 100 meters so we can drop down and select it from there itself so this helps uh, the customer also when we are going for r1 and customer requires high availability that is why every time i am mentioning about h is high available so for high available system a customer may require IO redundancy or the IM redundancies. So in that case, we can go with R1 system. Uh, one of the major architecture which is uh, required in case of 1500 uh, or redundant systems is basically the redundant IM with the double dream. So now with 1508 system, we can have this. And what is R1? You can see it from the presentation itself the r means the redundant interface module in our case it is it is 100 and one relation to h controller so one i am connected to one controller one i am connected to the other controller and by default with the sync cable the process images by the inputs and outputs are continuously being updated so this is a very important thing which we can use it in different applications uh, where the customer requires the solution and this solution is not only possible with our E200 SP, uh, it is also supported with E200 SP and E200 ISP also. So all these different variants with R1 is also supported. So dual network redundant co combinations are possible. And apart from that, in some cases, customer also require redundant IOs. And for redundant IOs, we have the blocks available whether it is DI, DO, AI, EO, there is a, a, a blocks available in our CIOS support site where you can download it freely and use it. And it is freely configurable. We can use um, one by in parallel in a single module only. We can use two IOs or in uh, two separate separate modules. We can use the different IOs for redundancy or maybe the replica mirror image of our interface module that uh, we can call add the addresses in the block and use it accordingly. Some of the architectures which are supported in case of 1500 RH systems. So R by default, I have already mentioned that MRP is mandatory because the sync cable synchronization happens over this profinet. So or if this cable breaks, at least this cable will be alive to take the synchronization. So that is why MRP is mandatory. But in some uh, customers' requirements are there, there where they want separate rings for drive, separate ring for MCC, MCCs. So in that case, we can have MRP interconnect also using our scale and switches. We can make multiple rings and it can support up to 10 multi rings with 1500 uh, R systems. At this moment, only S2 and S1 devices are supported uh, with 1500 R. In case of H, um, we can have MRP ring online uh, when we are using S2 or S1 devices. And we can also have MRP interconnections or combined technologies like uh, using MRP interconnect also, we can do it. But now with the new version 3.0, we can also support R1 where we can have redundant MRP rings, we can have redundant line architectures. Uh, some people also name it like open ring, but actually it's a line architecture. We can have a line architecture here also. And then uh, we can have the MRP interconnections and combined technology. So all the different variants of communic inter uh, communications or topologies is possible with 1500H system. So here you can see R1, S2, and S1 
for S2 and S1, when we are using R1, by default, we have to use a, a Y switch, which will enable the R1 to S2 or S1 configuration. We will see the configuration which are supported with 1500H. So until version uh, 15, from version 15.1 to until version 17, by default, this MRP thing was possible. And it was only the possibility with 1500H, but now with version 18 onwards, we can have line architectures. So because the IO or the process image will be by default synced from the cable by this yellow cable. So it is it doesn't matter whether I'm making a ring or not. The flexibility is when I'm making an MRP ring, then the by default, as per the profinet, we can have maximum 50 devices inside the ring. Now with a line architecture, we can go up to 256 devices. So this enables the availability. Then uh, we can have separate rings in some cases, like in tunnel metro application or in some customers also have their own ring network and they want to put our system, our edge system or our IOs in that ring itself. So that is also possible now with 1500 edge. Then uh, for the line architecture, we can have like the previous day we used to do with Profibus that we drop down one cable from here, one cable from the other CPU and do it like this. But one of the recommended architecture for line is like to, we can have one connection from one CPU to the first IM and from the last IM, we will take it to the um, backup CPU. So this enables us for more availability because if there is any cable cut in put the cable cuts in between these two IEM, then at least the other IEM is available by this CPU. So we will get the process image of this IEM via this CPU at least. So this is a recommended connection, but for that the customers has to take care about the laying of this Ethernet cable. Uh, one thing to mention here in case of R1, you can see here the green color for one side and blue color for the other side because in case of 1500H system with R1, we can have two different subnet uh, in this case. So we can have two different subnets to go up to 256 devices, but if, uh, we can also maintain one subnet where we can go, if I'm using all as R1 devices, then I can go one 256 divided by two, which is around 128 devices uh, total in line. We can also have combined connection where we can have R1 devices. And if I want to connect the S2 or S1 devices like our drives or our IMCCs, they do not support R1. So if I want to connect those devices uh, with our edge system, then we can use the Y switch, we, which we called as our DNA switch, dual network access. Uh, we can use that switch. So the two points are connected to the upper level CPU and the lower level, and we can make also a ring. So the availability is still more because uh, if we compare with the Profibus older days, Y couplers, that will be a line architecture, but here we can have line and also we, if you want to make a ring, we can make a ring also with 1500 edges. As I already mentioned, there is a new innovation uh, in case of 1500 with the uh, sync modules and distance between the two CPUs. So, by default, we were already having this to up to 10 meters with this sync module. We can, with multi mode, we can go up to 10 meters and we can use this sync module. But with for two kilometers to 10 kilometers, a single mode or LC cables, we can go with this sync module. And the new one, which is in our basket, is from eight kilometers to 40 kilometers, where we can use the sync module and then use a single mode fiber cable. These are pre assembled cables from Siemens. This can be any from anything from the market. So one more innovation with 1500H because uh, now we have the open uh, line architecture or the open ring architectures or in case of 1500 uh, with R1, we have this ring. And so if there are any breakages, like if one of my IO module fails, to how can I get the information? So one OB new is configured now. We can use this OB70, which will help me to get the information whether my interface module is not in the loop or if there is a network cable failure and we can call this OB and we can also show it in our HMI. The same way, uh, this OB70 can be called for whenever I have a multiple rings. So if one of the ring fails, the other ring is still alive. So I can 
solve this. The same goes for the whether it is an interface module or whether it's a network cable. The same is true. OB70 is a new thing which can be used. Previously, by default, OB72 was there with version 17, where we can get the sinkable redundancy. You know that in case of 1500H, both the, the sync cables are also redundant. So if one cable fails, still the system will change from primary to backup and backup to primary continuously. But the customer or the user may not know about uh, whether the cable is failed or not because now it is a single point of failure. So to give the information that, okay, the other cable is failed. So we have that OB72, which can also give us an information and we can show it in the HMI screen that one cable is failed. So you can replace that cable or maybe the sync module, whatever it is failure, you can use it and do it. So in our, in case of 1500H, we have also checked in our lab that the sync module, sync cables are also redundant. Another innovation in case of 1500H is like with the block, uh, this block was also there in the older days, RH control, so some new features have been added on. So RH control is basically for the sync up in case when the primary fails and uh, the backup is the new primary, then after some time when the backup CPU comes into picture, so it will sync up the data. So when there is a synchronization, there is no hamper in the process, the process goes on, but in that time, the communication is stopped with the other system, like the SCADA or other communication are stuck. So to avoid that, if I if my process doesn't demand that whenever the primary comes into a backup comes into picture, the sync should not be uh, should should be paused so that the data is continuously flowing to the SCADA. Then we can use this block and uh, we can stop the synchronization and we can also check if the sync is locked or not, or we can do the Back, stop the backup, stop the primary, depending upon whether I would do, want to do the firmware update or any other things. So this block have some new features, which is with version 18. So now uh, for the new innovations on uh, software controller, I will just hand over to Shabri. Shabri, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Kasim Jit. Can you share my screen? Hope my screen is visible. Uh, thank you, Prasenjit, uh, for wonderful explanation on our net system and the innovations. So, continuing the innovations, um, I'll be moving forward to the software controller. So, before going to the innovation, I just want to give you a small introduction about what is software controller. Um, so, software controller um, is nothing but a PC based controller. So, it is a piece of software which will be running on Siemens IPC. and it will have all the functionalities whatever you are realizing using the 1500 hardware cpu so same behavior or same functionalities you can realize with this piece of software but only difference is it is a software and it will be running in the siemens ipc and this uh, normally you know uh, this software is running parallel to windows and industrial os but in um, you know the windows and in, in industry OS is nothing but linux is not real time behavior which means if an application running uh, and you cannot able to tell when this application is going to execute because the windows are not real real time or deterministic but still our controller need to have a real time and deterministic behavior so how we are achieving this real time behavior using this um, uh, virtualization technology so we will see how we are uh, achieving this uh, real time or deterministic behavior using the virtualization then whatever the programming language you are using with 1500 hardware the same all kind of iec 61131 programming languages are supported in the software controller also and uh, important point that the yeah, portal uh, one common engineering platform uh, is supported for software controller also so there is no separate software the same with step seven you can able to develop the program for software controller also so these are the key points and introduction about the software controller so as i mentioned earlier um this software controller which is running parallel to our windows or linux 
why is that uh, and how is that we are done uh, let me explain it so normally we will be having hardware layer in our ipc on top of it siemens hypervisor so hypervisor is a virtualization technology and it will run on top of the hardware on top of it we will be running the windows or linux which is a separate uh, os uh, running in the hardware and in parallel to this we will be running our 1500 stack program in the hypervisor so the hypervisor will manage the both the softwares in parallel with the hardware so whatever the hardware allocation it has to be done with in parallel to the um, os and the plc the hypervisor will do it so what is the benefit we are going to uh, get out of it even though in terms of corruption in the windows the software control will continue to run in the ipc so there will be there will not be any problem in uh, execution of the program and also you can able to have a communication between windows and software controller for example if you are running in scada uh, in an ipc and you are having a 1500 um, hardware so um, that 1500 hardware can be converted to a software controller and this ipc in a single ipc you can able to execute both uh, scada and the software controller also and these are the some of the benefits and functions we are getting from the software controller um <clears throat> so this is a hot real time whatever which means uh whatever the performance you are getting with 15 under real time behavior the same thing we are achieving using the hypervisor technology so this all io can also be communicated with the software controller and also you can have hma communications so all the functionalities you whatever you are realizing with the 15 under hardware the same hardware function uh, same functionality can be realized with the software controller also what are the portfolios we are having with the 1500 software controller? We have 1505 uh, SP uh, footprint. Uh, this is a PC2 hardware. And this is looking like a, a PLC, SPC PLC, but it is a PC. Inside the PC, you will be running both SCADA and the software controller. And 1508S uh, and 1508S. So all software controller comes in standard and the fail safe variant also. Then what are the innovations? So previously the software controller version is version 21.9. Uh, recently the version 30.0 release has been happened. So what are the innovations happened in with respect to software control list? With the version 30.0, uh, software controller is supported in the industry OS. So industry OS is nothing but Linux based operating system and version 3.2 is supported and also uh, Linux application and also Docker based application. If you ever heard about previously Docker based, it's a edge tech in the edge also we used to say Docker and that application also run in parallel uh, with along with the your software controller. And also you can able to do a real time data exchange in terms of Linux OS. So real time data exchange means you'll be having common memory area where both Linux applications and the software controller will be accessing it. So using the shared memory concept and the second innovations is the new IPC generation like uh, BX39A, PX39A and IPC 227G is also supported by software controller. And what are all the innovations happened in version 3.0? For example, symbolic access runtime and long term trace and some improvement in OPCA and all are applicable to the version 3.0, version 30.0 software controller also. Then this simple one slide will show you how <clears throat> the software controller and the um, application in the Linux or Windows is communicating. So this uh, left hand side image shows that uh, how the uh, applications software controller are running. So normally I said uh, semantic IPC will be at the bot, uh, bottom uh, that the hardware on top of it hypervisor will be running and Windows 10 will be running parallel along with the software controller. So The software controller will be directly interfaced with the hypervisor and the rest of the Windows applications or SCADA will be running top of Windows 10. And the software controller will communicate with the applications via OPC UEA or is Open Development Kit, uh, ODK Kit, you can call it. 
and in in industrial wise which is nothing but our linux based operating system here also uh, the industry will be running on top of hypervisor but only difference is uh, here there will be a real time communication between the applications and the software controller by using this sh shared memory concept in addition to opc ua communications also some supported and the standard linux apps in addition to docker based applications also supported in the um, 1500 software controller in terms of linux and tia portal is support uh, tia portal is used to program both the software controller in both the operating systems then um, coming to the end of the presentations uh, we already crossed two minutes just i will take one more minute to complete this um considering time i took only the uh, one use case right now so itot integrations so how we can leverage our 1500 standalone application innovation uh 1500 standalone innovations for itot integrations so for that uh let's see what is the ot and ot is nothing but our operation technology shop flow so your machines or scada all are included or uh, as a operation technology so here um what are brownfield already existing or whatever the greenfield upcoming missions can have standard interface or non-standardized interface which means uh, some missions will be having modest tcp some will be having tcp ap communications and for upcoming missions you can go with a standard interface like opc or profinet so um, the takeaway is operation technology means uh, your missions along with the scanner in the shop flow and it um, it system is nothing but your erp system or plm system along with the cloud and simulation environment so this we call it as it system but why we need to have an itot integration in such cases for example <clears throat> nowadays the smart production smart production is nothing but your end-to-end -end production from order management to your production level so this if you want to achieve this kind of uh, automations in your shop flow then you should integrate your it system with the ot system um this is one kind of use case i'm saying so for this it ot integration we call it as so this is some architecture example where you can see this is a bottom of the ot system and top is the uh, it system up to ot system solution scada will be there after that you can able to realize the connection to the it system so you can able to leverage the data from your uh, field to your um top level uh, it systems also so how we can leverage with the uh, innovations so as i mentioned earlier so whatever the upcoming greenfield missions are coming you can able to uh, harmonize your data access using our profinet and the opc communication it's already supported but what is the additional things we are here i want to mention is with the new dedicated core for communication which allows to have a more bandwidth for data to connect it with the IT system. And also with the uh, increased performance level with the CPU, which allows us to execute more logic for IT OT integration. So this is one kind of use case where you can able to uh, leverage the uh, our hardware innovations, uh, recent hardware innovation. Like this, we'll be having a lot of use cases. Maybe in the uh, next uh, sessions, I try to cover more on this. Uh, 